Brighton's finest. This is Juice. So, thank you for joining me. First of all, uh, how are you feeling about tonight's show? Do you have butterflies? Do we have any feelings? <laughs> yeah, I do have feelings. I have. I get the butterflies before, and now I feel like I'm going into like a battle, like into a war zone. I don't know why. It's probably not the best way, you know, because people actually do go out on the front line and stuff, but that's kind of how it feels for me sometimes. So. so, now your second album, Knowing What You Know Now, is finally out. How do you feel about it? Uh, relief because um, we've been sitting on it for ages it's nice to have had all the feedback that we've had for it and to see that even like with the break of like four years from Weird and Wonderful um, that it's, it's done alright you know we've not like had to start all over again in a way do you know what I mean we're just back at where we left so it's awesome you knew it was going to be a big hit, though, didn't you? Are you surprised at all the um, universally positive? I guess, yeah, I, I was positive the whole time, but trying to be as positive as I could, you know, in the recording process and stuff. And I was psyched about the songs. I was excited. So I knew if I had the excitement there, I, I knew we were kind of like onto something all right. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. It is a big progression musically from the weird and wonderful Marmosettes. Was that deliberate or did it just happen? It just happened. We kind of, well, we do, we just write what we want and that's kind of how it is. Obviously, we do, we do take into mind, of, you know, we can't go too far out. We can't go like, I don't know, we can't be like Lana Del Rey, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd love to because I really like her voice and what she does. Yeah, or like Celine Dion or something mm. like that, you know, we couldn't go too, like, too far fetched I guess um. so you do kind of worry about taking too many creative risks no never um, <clears throat> I guess we still have a bunch of songs that we can work on that might not have been right well wasn't so right for knowing what you know now but could be awesome for the next record so we kind of keep things hidden and then we work on them and then release it when the timing's right so mm-hmm. It reminds me of the big jump between Muse's first and second album uh, in performance and guitar style and in your ambition. Was there anyone that you were consciously referencing or any things that you decided while you were writing the album that you really wanted to explore? Um, Not really. We kind of do this thing where we've got all individual, I guess, ears for certain music and types of styles and stuff. So what we do is we go, okay, like, for instance, like, Jack would be like big black I like that guitar tone can we do something similar to that so it's more like trying to do something but with our own our own music do you know what I mean so it's not so much like oh I want to sound like the Foo Fighters or Nirvana or Pixies do you know what I mean even though we worked with Gil Martin which is awesome um, we were still able to sound marmosettes but use tones and experiment that way do you know what I mean like and for me I definitely there's a lot more diversity in um in what I do throughout the album with songs and stuff. So I don't know, it's, it's good just to play around and let the song be what it is. Are you writing new material at the moment? Yeah, we have been writing, yeah. Um, while we were waiting for this album to come out, me and Jack have been doing quite a bit of writing together. Sam's got a bunch of ideas, Jack's got like thousands of ideas, Will's got ideas, Josh has got ideas. So it's going to get exciting when it comes up. the point where it's like, okay, let's do this third album and mm. it's just gonna be like where do we start I think that's gonna be the, the issue is like where do we start <laughs> how does it feel to be where you are now because I feel like you're really on the cusp of hitting it big do you feel excited or a little bit scared about that or do you just think that the possibilities are endless for you yeah the possibilities are endless but they can always go in different directions as long as it's always positive and it's always good then I'm down for it now, you had to take a couple of years' break. Mm-hmm. What were the other guys up to while you were recovering? Was the band like still a thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were living all in different areas. Um, I guess a massive important thing was getting the family time that we could because we knew that we were working for something that potentially could be the status quo of us being able to be like we're gonna we were definitely gonna do this for life even though we've signed a deal for like five albums do you know what i mean it's like still you can you can be a band that just flops do you know what i mean like you can bring out a rubbish album and the label's not interested anymore i guess we're kind of like in a place where it's like we're clever do you know what i mean like we're clever enough but then still happy and feel so much freedom and 
so much joy in what we do because it's all ours mm. and it's nobody else's. So, and we get to work with a bunch of amazing people in the industry as well. So it's a big team effort. How is it being in a band that's two sets of siblings? There's, there's surprisingly a lot of bands like that. I think maybe because you can have that creative freedom and you know that when you put out an idea, they won't, you know, just rubbish it. Well, that's see, that's not what I know. I know half the time a lot of people do argue and they either really don't like each other but they just do it because they all want to be superstars do you know what I mean it's like for us that's not like the main thing it's mm. like we're not even bothered by that the main thing is we all have the same dream so we just keep working at it um, it's all it's all I know because I've been in a band for like 10 years now so it's like 15, 16 when we started so we've had all the you know the teenage and then obviously a young adult now it's like I don't know you just you just learn how to work things out and learn how to be happier with each other and I remember back in the day I'd be like if Sam wrote a certain like melody for something for the chorus and I'd be working like so hard trying to get something and then Sam would just come in and be like yeah I've got the chorus idea and I'm like why do you have to do it why do you get it why can't I get it it's like but we've learned now it's like to be like yeah mate come on because everyone's so talented in their own way so it's like you just have to be like yes you know that's how you end up getting to places as a band is by supporting each other and getting the best ideas that you can. You obviously feel a bit ambiguous about touring because you wrote the song Lost in Translation, mm -hmm. which is, well, you, you explain it. Yeah, Lost in Translation, it's about, you know, being completely out of your comfort zone and around people that don't speak the same language and therefore it can be quite emotionally and mentally draining because you're just always trying to maybe get your point across or maybe just people just don't want to listen because they can't they can't understand you either half of the time even though like english is like the number one language you know what i mean people do pick and choose whether to like it or not so it's i don't know but at the end of the day all i think is i take it personal because i'm like i ain't done nothing wrong to you i'm sorry about maybe ancestors or whatever but it's like me personally you know don't don't take it out of it it's like in russia we went to the shop and i went to go get cigarettes and the girl like literally spat on the floor when i came in yeah, I was just wow. like disgusted and I was like, have I done something? I was just like, and then you try and be like, you're right, like, what's, what's, what's the deal here? Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you, why are you being so aggro at me? And they just, they just shout at you, Russian, and it's just like, all right, fair dues. I was like, my ancestors are from Russia, so I'd be like. <laughs> Brighton's finest. This is Juice. Juice.